Can everyone hear me? Yes? Okay, good, good. I'm very uh, blessed, honored. Um, I thank God for being here, first and foremost. Um, I thank uh, my fiance and her parents and her sister for being here in the front row. Um, but I also, of, of course, thank you guys for coming and um, thank Cameron for having me. I'm just taking a moment to breathe. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Um, you know, mom always, always told me, don't serve cold food, right? I'm pretty sure you guys have heard that, right? It's a southern term, okay? You never want to serve people cold food. And so, you know, my fiance, Brittany, I've been writing things out and talking about, I think this will sound good, or what do you think about this, or what do you think about that? And she said, honey, you're gonna do well. You're gonna do fine. You're gonna do well. All right? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please interact with me. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> so what, what I think I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about love. You're like, love, right? right? It's February. <laughs> we have my fiance and our parents here. But, when I say love, I mean the art of loving, the art of love, right? For me, growing up in Georgetown, South Carolina, I spent a lot of time with my family. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. My grandmother was very influential to me. She was the one that taught me how to love, how to love. And what that meant to me was everything. I mean everything. I remember her making the jelly layered cakes and me, you know, dancing and singing right in front of this radio here, you see. And um, she would yell, stop dancing and singing. You're gonna knock over my cakes in the, in the, in the oven. <laughs> and she would sit down with me and she would tell me, son, it's gonna rain today. I'm like, grandma, how do you know it's gonna rain today? I can feel it in my knees, honey. I can feel it in my knees. I would sit on the counter and draw. I would dr try to draw her as best as I could. And she would say, well, let me see, honey, let me see. And then every Friday, she would get together with her friends, and she would go to Piggly Wiggly, and she would buy art supplies for me, all right? But I always loved being around her. I always wanted her approval. I always wanted her to see what I was able to create. And she would say, son, you know you got a God-given talent? My grandma was very spiritual. And so I never really understood what that meant about having a God-given talent. My mom would share with all of her friends that I could draw and color in the lines at four. So she has all of the coloring books and all of the drawings that I would do from like Ninja Turtles and the Simpsons and all of my favorite, you know, cartoon characters. But again, going back to the word love and the art of loving, right? I read a book from Dr. Martin Luther King called The Strength of Love. And it was about looking at different religions different cultural backgrounds and seeing the similarities and seeing the commonalities, right? And so what led me to do this series here, I was thinking about first and foremost paying homage to my grandmother. Because looking back at the context of history, during the 60s wasn't easy. It was very traumatic for some, difficult, okay? But in those moments of difficulty, there was some tenderness, there were some sweet moments, there was some unity, there was some togetherness, there was some hope, there was some love, right? And she would share with me some of those stories while I would sit with her, drawing beside her feet while she would watch soap operas and during commercials, right? You know, like, as the world turned and guy in light and young and restless, <laughs> restless and, you know, old and beautiful, right? But my grandmother, she would come home from uh, come from uh, on Fridays from grocery shopping and she would show me these scratch pads. She, she'd say, look, look what I got you. 
And so you know, you guys have played with uh, scratch pads where you got the crayon underneath and the black on top. And so I'd sit there beside her and just scratch out, you know, whether it was my hand or whether it was her or whether it was something I saw on TV or whether it was something in a magazine. And then my father, a military man, right? I spent four years in the military. He was very conservative and discipline oriented. And he always challenged me. And every car trip we would have, he said, I bet you can't draw your hand. And so I learned so much the art of loving through the art of observing. Because I was trying to see how much detail that I could capture, right? But what I didn't realize is like me trying to capture that detail, I was actually like sharpening my observational skills. I was really learning who I am as a person. As my grandma would say, you're son of God, right? You're king. You always believe in yourself, right? So I was sharpening my skills over and over and over. Because the beautiful thing is, is that I got a sheet of paper or I got a scratch pad, and I could create something out of nothing. And in that art form, that is an act of love. It's courageous. Every single time that I open up a canvas and start painting, I get nervous. I still do. I've been doing it for so long, but I still do. Because again, it's a reminder of like, Charles, you can create a world. You can create something out of nothing. And so I'm putting this out there to you when you, when you, when you think about the word love, really think about like, how are you loving A first yourself and what does that look like? And if you are actually exercising the art of loving every single day, or could you be? And so what that means is just sitting down for a second or two, being patient, being observant, and opening yourself up to truth. Because back in the 60s, that was a troubled time. That was a challenging time for people, right, for folks. And during those times, it was looking past the opposition, looking past the challenges, and understanding that connectedness, togetherness, is really what it's all about, right? So just as like when you're sitting there with a blank sheet of paper, you're literally connecting with this piece of paper. You're connecting your mind, your body, your thoughts, your spirit with what you're going to say, what you're going to put out. And I'm conscious of that every single time. I never take it for granted every, when I paint. Because it's, it's an opportunity for me to express myself, to share myself. And when I'm done with the painting, then I'm, I'm mentally drained. I gotta go sit down somewhere or play some jazz or you know, have a glass of wine. When I make these paintings, it's me literally taking moments from history and I'm posing questions of what if or what could or why not. And so when you look at all of the work, yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's, yes, it is inviting. Yes, it's welcoming. But I'm wanting you as the viewer to see yourself and how you see yourself against the world. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you believe in. We all have things that we believe in. But the greatest gift, the greatest, greatest courageous act that I continue to share and that I continue to make art about is love. This is what you see of me literally showing you that I love myself enough to, to share something with you. That's serving, that's a, that's a service. For me, I'm an advocate of the arts and I'm an advocate of love, an advocate of human beings. Everywhere we went as a little boy, me and my brothers, we had to talk to people. My mom would take us in stores and she'd say, look, don't touch nothing, all right? <laughs> right? If you touch something, you know what you're going to get, right? But anyone that she met, it didn't matter how many times we saw that person, we had to say, hi, my name is, this is what I'm working on. She wanted us to make sure that we were literally interacting and connecting with people. Growing up in the church, every third Sunday, I had to say a prayer, read a scripture, or, or do something in the church, right? I hated it. Actually, I did. 
But as an adult, I realized, I understand that all of that was sharpening my skills to connect, and more importantly, have the biggest understanding about love and community, right? So during the 60s, right, again, my grandma would tell the stories of her interacting with people and how her as a nurse, she would serve. So I remember her bake, baking cakes and literally like me getting on my bicycle trying not to drop the cake to the neighbor's house to give them the note and the cake, right? All of that literally has kept me from myself. What that means is flesh, ego, pride, what people think. All those things that we kind of like walk day to day and like, oh, what does this person think? Who cares? Who really cares? I'm standing up here talking to y'all and I'm like, well, hey, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like we're together, we're fellowshipping. I remember, I remember giving a talk before and I told the staff uh, this here at Cameron. I said, the idea of the museum is literally like the new church. Because when you go to church, it's literally you go to a building, right? You're communing with others, you're fellowshipping with others, and you're waiting or hoping to hear something that's transformative, truth, right? And so when I look at, when my mom would take me and my brothers to museums, galleries, because she didn't know what to do, here's my son, he's got a talent, God, please, you know, she, I would hear her, God, please show me the way. It was all about fellowship, connecting. Because when I say I'm an advocate, I'm truly an advocate. When I use the word love, it really is love, okay? Y'all see a bunch of yellow, right? A whole lot of yellow, a whole lot. Why is that? Well, when we look at the world today, we see yellow and school bus, yield signs, happy face, right? Caution tape, okay? I did my research, and so yellow is uh, curious, it's um, observant, it's happy, right? It has these dualities, these human-like traits, right? Joseph Alberts, he was a um, artist, but also scientist as well, researcher, and he had his uh, students, he had his students get together and match these colors, and he wanted, he, he documented what the students were feeling from these colors. And so you see, it's not a coincidence that you see the yellow and the red for the McDonald's sign, right? All of that is intentional. Um, the clothes that we wear, all of that, that really identifies who we are, okay? Blue, sky blue, spiritual wisdom, green, growth, money, right? You know, black, rich, power, you know, depth, um, white, pure, holy, all these things, right? All of these sort of connotations, right? that we see and that we utilize them in our world today. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to choose yellow because A, I thought about the complexities of human beings, of us all, right? And the color yellow, I said, well, why not like make it continuous throughout all the pieces, okay? How can I make sure that I take these historical photos that I'm researching and going to different museums, going through the archives and finding the meat and potatoes? as I've heard in the South. Have you guys heard that? The meat and potatoes, right? Looking at this piece here, sunflower. The original photo is, is this boy being observant during the 70s, during a Black Panther protest. And I painted this piece during COVID because I was staring at him, but really I was looking at myself. And I was really thinking about, okay, with this whole COVID thing, where do we go from now? Where do we go from here? And then on, on his shirt, he has Angela Davis, who was part of the protest during the Black Panther movement, uh, who was a huge advocate um, for us all. She's printed on his shirt, and it reminded me of my grandmother, of just having that continuation of spirit no matter where I go, no matter who I come in contact with, right? These pieces here behind you, behind me, these are the Freedom Riders. These are the Freedom Riders, okay? I said to myself, well, 
Paying homage to my grandmother, I always heard, again, taking these southern things that I've heard, southern terminologies or phrases, behind every strong man, there's a, you guys want to finish it? <laughs> and me being a comic book person, I love comics, I love Marvel, the Avengers, I, I'm all about coming together. Why not pay homage to all of the women that stood beside the men during the Freedom Rides? And then even more importantly, I thought about, okay, how can I reinsert myself, my ideas, my views, my thinking into the art canon? Okay, so who was a person in history that did that, who paid homage to a person and also um, that person during that time who was popular, who was um, viewed all over? And Andy Warhol did a screen print of Marilyn Monroe and repeated her image over and over and over. So I said, okay, if I'm gonna insert myself into the canon, insert my views, my ideas, my thinking, my love, let me just reverse this process. So what Andy Warhol did is he did the screen printing first and then he did the painting second. So what I did is I said, well, let me paint first, right? And then let me break down and understand what does screen printing look like if you zoom in on the magnifying glasses. So you have these little dots, right? And so I made the aesthetics of the dots. I was this rambunctious child growing up in, <laughs> in elementary school and middle school, and I was always drawing on the desk, and I was never, I never really had recess. Um, I, honest. And, um, and so my mom volunteered a lot at my school because she wanted to make sure that I was behaving. Um, actually, maybe you guys may get to meet her, Christy Weaver. She is, I think she's on her way. She taught me in second grade and uh, she's been still teaching me. But she was the one, the first teacher that called my mom and said, you need to come in here, get your son, get him under control. <laughs> And, um, and we're, she's like a psycho mom to me, so you'll get to meet her, but she, she's on her way. But with that being said, when it came to different subjects in school, science was always my favorite, always. I just love the mixture of chemicals and just like what it could make, all the chemical properties, right? So I started thinking about some of the my childhood love of being in school. And I didn't know about the Freedom Rides when I was in school. So another thing I thought about was like, Charles, you're literally like, as I was making the aesthetics of the circles, I was like, Charles, you're literally excavating your own history. Isn't that like fascinating? And that's why I say the word love, right? Because when you are loving in the act of loving, the art of loving, you get these aha moments. But you first have to sit down. You have to get in that quiet space. You have to get in that quiet place. Right? And if you continue to do that, hopefully each day, you'll sharpen your skills, your observational skills, and you'll obtain so much knowledge, right? So the goal is to create, recreate the periodic table. And these are the first 30 or so of the portraits, women portraits, who were a part of the Freedom Rides. Really excited about that. Uh, can I get a hand clap for that? Okay. Um, let's see, let's see. This here, um, this piece, Scramble, I was in my studio, this was uh, grad school, this was like 2017, I graduated grad school 2017. 2016, the North Carolina Museum of Art, when I was in grad school, came to my studio, thankfully, and uh, they came and collected three uh, pieces uh, to add into their permanent collection. But from that led me to um, really take the art of painting and how I look at painting from working back to front and really break down those, that thought process and see if I could do that with video and film. Okay, because typically when you paint, you work from back to front. And depending on what medium, light to dark, right? So there was an incident that happened um, in Texas, the McKinley pool party, right? I'm pretty sure you guys heard of it. I don't have to 
share about that in detail. But from that, with the mindset of how could this situation be different? Now, I don't have kids, or I put myself in sort of a parental type mindset of, OK, well, what if that was my child? Or better yet, Charles, because I'm giving you all a little insight of like how I'm thinking. Better yet, Charles, who were your superheroes, like your true superheroes growing up? And it actually was the cops. It was the police officers. Here's why. Every 4 o'clock in the afternoon during the summers, I would sit with my grandma, and we'd watch In the Heat of the Night. Y'all remember In the Heat of the Night? Virgil Tibbs and Chief, you know? No? It's, it's a great show. I still, it's, a great show. <laughs> it's a great show. I still watch it on Amazon Prime. But the, I mean, police officers, are my, and they still are today. And so what I did is I looked at the McKin McKinley Pool Party video that was online, I froze the frames and really stared at it. And when I froze the frames, I screenshot it, I started looking at the image on screen of, well, wow, it looks like he's actually helping the young lady instead of what they have said, that he was hurting. And so what I've learned to myself is like, oh, Charles, OK, you, you have these historical photographs that are out there, this, these photographs are proof of documentation that this ha actually happened. But it's up to you, as an advocate for the arts, to reappropriate that, right? To reframe that, right? What does your frame, Charles, look like? Okay? And so that's what I did. Then, I, I, I mean, I love sports, but hey, I wanted to play football, but my mom was like, no, <laughs> save your hand. You need to be drawing. My dad was like, you know what? Let him be a boy. He should be rough and tough and tumble and all that stuff. I'm like, OK. So I didn't get to play football. But I still love it, right? And John Madden, you all know who John Madden is, right? And I would love, when sitting watching football, I'd love when he would draw all over a screen. <laughs> right. And they still do that, play you know, football games. But I thought about that. And so the yellow slashes and mark making that you see are the actual cop running through the screen. So I documented, I documented his, his steps. And then I went back into art history and I said, oh, OK, well, who was an artist that actually like sort of um, expressed himself in that sort of energy? Or who were a group of artists? So I was looking at the abstract, abstract expressionist. And Franz Klein, I'm, hopefully you guys know him or will look him up. But as an abstract expressionist, he made bold, large paintings of bold shapes, mark making. And if you look at them in person, they're so layered, they're thickly layered. So I traveled all the way to LA to look at one of the largest collections of Franz Klein at all the museums. And, um, and it gave me permission to say, Charles, you're moving in the right direction. This is something that is. Uh, that needs to be shared. I got five minutes, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to speed through this, but I also want you guys to uh, please stop me and ask questions because I think this is very important for us to share, to connect, and to fellowship, right? Because we're doing it in what? What's that word? <laughs> close, <laughs> close. What's that, what's that four letter word that I was saying? We're doing, we're doing it in love. We're doing it in love, all right? Same thing with the scratch pads over here with my grandma bringing them home from Piggly Wiggly. I said, okay, I did a small one, let's do a large one. Okay, and this one, this was, uh, this is called Young Panther from the Black Panther Movement, a teen who is advocating at that time for the Black Panther Movement. I was thinking about Spider-Man and watching the Avengers and thinking, wow, here was a teenager who, you know, is joining the fight, the cause to save Earth, okay? Well, in history, what teens you know, join a, a cause that they believed in. Um, and so, therefore, I, I found this photo. Uh, let's see. What else? Let's go to one in the back. All right. I was asked the question earlier, which one is my favorite piece? All of them, really, but currently, this one is my favorite piece. <laughs> 
Uh, this is a self-portrait of me, and this one is called uh, Breaking Through Kiss the Sky. And I created this piece because, A, um, you know, I, I don't have a problem sharing um, my experiences. I'm very transparent. Uh, and so, and, and that's part of freedom. That's part of love, and that's part of learning yourself, right? Because that's an art and that's an act that you can do every single day. So with this piece here, it's me with floaties and goggles, right? A goggle and floaties. I've had three accidental drownings where I've been brought back to life. So when I start my speeches or my talks, when I say, hey, I'm grateful to be here, I really mean that, right? So I try to paint myself every year to document myself, just like photographs are being documented for us to look at history, that I was here. And so you'll see the thumbprint sign at the bottom, and that is me, another way of me saying, hey, I am here. Okay. The colors that you see, I love colors. Like, see my shirt? Okay. We all got color in us. Okay. We all come from different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, like, doesn't this feel good to fellowship with one another? Right. So I want to continue to do that, and I hopefully want you guys to join me in that. Please share it with your friends. Let them know about this exhibition. Let them, more importantly, know about Cameron. They're doing a great job. They're doing an excellent job. So hopefully I'll be continuing to work with them and thank you guys for coming. We've got we've got we've got one question. Well, I'll tell you my process. And so all of these um, painted images of the Freedom Riders came from mugshots. So I looked at their mugshots. So I didn't want to put a negative connotation out there. I mean, I just said to myself, again, just how I posed the questions earlier that I shared with y'all, I said, OK, well, what if? So you have the frontal and the side on the mugshots, but I chose to use the frontal. And the other thing is, is that I don't and this is not knocking it, but I don't project. So it is my job to, to elevate the spirit of the photograph. Does that make sense? And so for me, I'm very conscious of my choices as an individual, but I'm also very conscious and, and intentional when I paint, and when I create something. Because I don't want the viewer to come into contact with my work and say, oh, this is just pretty, or oh, this just looks good. There's so much depth within the works. It's literally the, the way that I, the representational way that I have um, shown the portrait, it's just inviting you to go deeper. So I'm literally like sort of giving you, serving you the art of loving, the art of love. And when you're patient and you're kind and you kind of share the fruits of the spirit with yourself and you do that, consistently and continuously, you'll actually do that for others very organically. And that's what, um, that's what the portraits sort of originate and come from, yeah. But thank you for that observation too, yeah. Anyone else? Why all women? I grew up with strong women. My grandmother, two grandmas, my mom was one of 10 children two sets of twins, um, I mean strong. And my mom gave everybody in the community and in the church and wherever they went permission to discipline me. <laughs> so, so I'm very grateful of strong women, love strong women. And, and the thing about it too is, I, 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 again, that spirit, I mean, women can do so much more than men. I mean, and, and this, that's another debate or talk, but it's just like the, 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 the spirit that my grandmother had. I mean, she, she had arthritis really bad, but I you would never know. 
I tell you, I'll tell you a quick story, because I know you said five minutes. I'll tell you a quick story. I accidentally dropped the lawnmower, the push lawnmower, on my grandmother's arm. Like, I was eight. So I was helping her in the garden while she was picking the weeds. I was pushing the lawnmower. Well, there was some sort of like rope or something that got caught up in the blade. So she's like, honey, lift it up so I can pull the rope under the, from the blade. So I pulled it up. There was bees. I was like, Grandma, the bees are trying to get me <laughs> while I'm trying to hold the lawnmower up. And I dropped it right in her arm. Let me tell you, my grandma did not yell, scream, curse me out, any of that. She put her head down, took a couple of breaths, and she said, honey, I love you. Now help me get this love bar off my <laughs> <laughs> And so, I mean, I mean, true story. And so I literally spent, you know, the next, you know, four to six weeks drawing different, you know, you know, cartoon characters or sweet messages on her, on her arm. And she would always, she would always uh, say to me, she, she's like, uh, son, sing me the song. And her song was, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And so I'd try to whistle it, and I'd sing it, or I'd dance around it, you know. So yeah, I was her happy child. Yeah. So anyway, great question. Anyone else? Awesome. Thank you guys again for being here.